Hi folks, I'm Alex Andersvit and welcome to Capchon live show number 14. Yeah, that's that's pretty great. Today we're we're talking about um, exposure uh, tool tab. I will tell you about some pretty not obvious things about exposure in Capchon. And also of course of course I will answer all of your questions and we will edit this particular pretty nice cat as well. Uh, this cat, by the way, you can easily download it and uh, challenge your editing skills because this raw file was available available with my uh, last issue of uh, Capshaw newsletter. Okay, let's see what we have online here. Let's see. Oh yeah, I see Tony and Fernando and Carlos and Dmitri. Hi folks, I'm really great to he to see you here. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty nice. Okay, few few words before we'll proceed. Uh, first of all, um, just keep in mind that you can always save 10% on most of Capture One products. I'm talking about, for example, Capture One license. If you're planning to purchase Capture One license, license, just use this code. Hmm. Hmm. What's wrong with a phase one store? Okay, let's try again. Uh, what is happening here? Hmm. Phase one. I'm live. On, on stream phase one uh, okay let's let's try again let's go to caption store and okay oh subscription hmm something yeah, yeah, okay okay Okay, let's try a different browser. Yeah, maybe like this. You know, if right now somebody from phase one is is watching me, um, just just I just wish to let you know that you have some problems with uh, Chrome browser. Yeah, man. Okay, uh, you're clicking buy now, uh, and now just enter promotional code AMBC one block click apply and you will immediately save 29 dollars so that's that's pretty nice nice uh plus uh, as you can see recently phase one released uh, the new uh, pack of styles and you can also save 10 percent on styles just use this code uh, a m b c one block click apply Hmm. hmm. There, there is something wrong. Okay, let's let's try different. Maybe it's some. Yeah, maybe it's some another deal. Yeah. Uh, let's try caption styles. And where is yeah this latitude styles? Just go to latitudes, by styles, by now. And yeah, again, A M B C one block. Yeah, that would also save you almost four dollars. You know, that's not bad. Um, okay, what else? Um, recently, I have uh, sent you the new issue of my newsletter. Uh, in this newsletter, I'm talking about Capture on 11.2 uh, up updates, and also I am uh, sharing my some of uh, like pretty interesting tips to Capture on. For example, how to find Capture on user settings. Also, I'm telling you how to yeah how to add Im images to Selects album, plus uh, what to watch on the on this week and. Yeah, and a raw file for practice. That's why, if you wish to subscribe to this uh, newsletter, just go to 
alexandra.com slash caption 11 oh no 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 slash newsletter and here you can easily and absolutely free subscribe to my newsletter the new the next issue will be i think it will be at tuesday yeah i think at tuesday like a few days uh and yeah i think some of you well, like when some of you have saw this uh this announcement, Capture on 11.2, I think there might be some questions, like, okay, and where is Capture on 11.2 review, or video overview, or something like that. Well, actually, actually there is. Uh, you can just go to alexnero.com, Capture on 11.2 overview. Um, unfortunately, Capture on 11.2 is like not the real point something upgrade you know uh, when, when when developers are releasing something like 11.1 11.2 11.3 everybody are waiting for oh new features where 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 they are like yeah cuz it's just the naming but the point is that caption line point 2 is mostly about caption ch this is like the special version of caption you will find all the details in my overview and for us for just for common photographers uh, in this update you will find only new cameras uh, profiles new lenses profiles um, and a bunch of bug fixes well not bad but just don't expect anything you know like fantastic from this upgrade at the same time this upgrade resets the trial which is pretty interesting if you're on caption 10 this upgrade gives you additional 30 days to try caption 11 or if some of your friends are on lightroom oh, or on any other software just let them know that Caption 11.2 would give them additional 30 days of trial, then that's pretty, pretty nice thing. Okay, what we have uh, in our chats. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, Keith is writing, perfect timing, I was just randomly messing with it. Okay, that's... It's, I'm glad to hear. Uh, yeah, that's why, folks. If you if you're just like if you are thinking about Capture on Eleven Point Two, just go to alexandro.com and here you will find the the complete overview. But in general, this upgrade is mostly about just Capture on CH. It's like special cultural her heritage like the special version of capture one which were uh, which was de developed for museums and archives and uh, well it costs something it costs something about like six thousands of dollars that's why yeah just like if you're just shooting you know like some some nice people or some nice events or maybe some just regular objects just just forget about this it's just like it's completely different thing it's like if you're if you're shooting some I don't know, like ancient treasure treasuries or something like that. Then, yeah, maybe this this software would, would fit you pretty nice. But in all other cases, just use the regular pro version and find all the details at my blog. Um, okay, now let's talk about this uh, pretty nice cat, uh, which I have. Um, shared with you as uh, a raw file for practice in my last um, newsletter what we can do with this with with, with uh, this file um, first of all we can enhance the color here pretty seriously um, and there are lots of ways how you can do this uh, but I just wish to share with you one pretty interesting trick which is not really obvious, and some photographers who who migrated to Capture One not long ago, uh, they just might, might don't know about this feature. Uh, it's called grayscale mask. Um, you will find it here, and if you will if you will just turn on grayscale mask, 
and you will draw something, you will immediately see this picture. It looks like, you know, like, like first time, actually, actually, first time when I run this mode, I just thought like, whoa, 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 okay, that's like, that's just the bug, just the error of, of catch one. But no, actually, that's uh, the real thing. And just like, this is just how uh, grayscale mask looks like. And now I just wish to, to show you why you might need to need, might, might need to use it. Uh, for example, you have the image like this. Fluffy, small object, pretty nice object, um, with lots of hair. And if you will try to draw a mask, mask there, like this, you see? We're drawing the mask. I can... My idea is just to create the mask across the, uh, the kitty. Yeah, like around the kitty. And, yeah, and now I will refine this mask. Yeah, maybe a little bit there. Yeah. Now let's refine the mask. Yeah, like this. And now, like, there is a problem that, as you can see, you can't actually say where the mask starts and where it ends, because, well, it's refined and refined completely. What we can do there? You can just turn on the grayscale mode. Ba -bam. And now you can easily um, easily see where where you have mask and where you don't. Uh, all the like all all the all the white colors on uh, on the image represents the one hundred percent opacity mask, and like the grayscale like level like the, the grayscale just represents the different opacity of. Uh, of the of this ma mask and uh, black color as uh, like zero opacity, like actually there is no mask in this area, like this, and you can easily find out what do you have here. Okay, let me uh, draw all the all the other sectors of uh, areas uh, of this mask, like this. And what we can do there? Um, first of all, I would like to fix uh, a white balance a little. Uh, the point is that I don't want to mess with the white balance on the kitty, because um, I don't think that it would look pretty nice. I think that the, that the cold white balance uh, would not work well there. That's why I will just fix the white balance only on the yeah, on the background. Yeah, like this. Maybe. Yeah, something. Something like that. Yeah, I think now it looks, the background looks much better now. You see, because like before it was like, yeah, really yellow. Um. Now let's uh, create a new layer, copy mask from the first layer, invert it. Now we have a mask on kitty only. And here, yeah, uh, maybe just a little, I will fix the white balance there as well. Yeah, and also I see that it would be better to add some additional mask yeah i think maybe here uh what we can do else well clarity will work pretty nice there today we will talk about clarity by the way um and what we can do else a uh, structure slider might also give you an interesting editing there I think something like that. Let's compare. Yeah, I think now it's look now it looks much much better. But I, you can also go to color editor, and you see this nose, 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 
just let's let's add a little bit of saturation yeah like this and let's take this yellow color and desaturate it a little bit yeah like this now all the colors i think looks much more natural yeah i think that looks pretty pretty nice um okay what do i have uh, in our chats uh, bum, bum, bum. yeah i see more people online that's pretty nice okay let's talk about exposure exposure tool tab today oh let's go to let's find some images yeah you know i don't want to give you you know like the the, the complete like description of all the tools in this exposure to tool tab because well as I, as, 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 I, as I have said for many times, uh, I'm not running like, you know, like online lessons or I'm not doing tutorials about CaptureOn. Like we're doing live show. We're just like talking with you. You're asking questions. I'm answering your questions and I'm sharing some interesting things about uh, tools and tricks of raw editing in CaptureOn. That's why um, what I wish to tell you about Exposure Tool tab is like, there are some things that are not pretty obvious, actually. And th these things might give you some interesting, like, insights for your editing. Like, first of all, let's talk about this histogram tool. In general, if you are not aware of histogram, if you aren't familiar with uh, how it works, um, how does it work, well... I highly recommend you to learn more about this because that's a big topic really big like there are lots of interesting well actually if you will go to just go to a free guide to capture one now go to exposure this is my free guide to capture one by the way go to exposure and here you will find Yeah, I think somewhere somewhere here. Yeah, like here you will find um, uh, a pretty nice video uh, to understand how histogram works. Uh, that's why if you are not familiar with this tool, I highly highly recommend you to to learn more about it. Um, because the things which I wish to to share with you, they are not about the histogram it's, itself, because it's it's like it would be pretty obvious, but but about like the features of histogram in Capture One, because there are some specifics. Okay, anyway, uh, there is a tool called histogram, and most of photographers are pretty sure that okay, this is a histogram, and also, for example, exposure evolution is also a histogram. And also, Levels tool also has a histogram, and it would be pretty understandable if all of these histograms, they would work, like, equal. If they would work absolutely the, the same way. But the problem is that all these histograms work differently. And this is the pretty interesting thing. Like, let's start with this histogram called exposure evaluation. The point is that this histogram always shows you the histogram of original raw file. And even if you would do any editing, you will not see the difference with this uh, uh the difference on on the histogram let's add for example exposure here and as you can see you see i'm moving exposure slider and nothing is really happening on the exposure evaluation histogram at the same time you see if i will perform the same action 
on again and you will see, immediately see the difference with the histogram tool. Um, that's why if you will do, if you will, will perform any editing with your image, never, never make any decisions based on exporter evaluation histogram. Because this histogram always shows you the histogram of original raw file without editing. But there is only one important moment to, to understand is that you can, if you will perform crop, like this, it would change the, the, the histogram. It might change the histogram, let's say, this way. You see, I'm, I'm moving the, the crop window and the histogram is a little bit changing. That's why, like, this is the first thing which you just, you just need to keep in mind that exposure evaluation, it's like, it's a, it's pretty useful tool when you're uh, when you're like, for example, shooting tether at uh, under the direct sunlight, like in this way, like this histogram might might work pretty well for you. Uh, also, there is like a levels histogram, and the good news is that the levels histogram it shows you the like the histogram of the original image plus all the editing. I'm talking about, for example, if you're doing any corrections, you see, you will immediately see the difference on levels histogram as well. But at the same time, there is still difference between histogram and levels tool. The point is that, as you can see, the histograms on these tools are slightly different. And there is a pretty pretty interesting answer why on the question why uh, they are different different uh, the point is that levels tool yeah it shows you the the histogram of edited image but without your processing profile the point is that when you're in the processing recipe when you're setting your processing profile, it would also affect your histogram. For example, sRGB would have different, uh, the file with sRGB would have different uh, histogram um, of than the file with, with uh, uh, Adobe RGB profile or with some, uh, I don't know, like Fit one gray profile. Uh, that's why it's really important to keep in mind that only histogram tool represents the real histogram which you will see after the processing. Histogram tool shows you the histogram of original raw file with some applied, um, with some editing applied, with all the editing applied, yeah, plus with a uh, processing profile. Everything together on this histogram. All the other histograms in Capture they would represent only some of this, some of these things. I hope that it's pretty understandable. Um, hmm. Let me see what we have in questions section here and we will go, go further after this. Uh, Keith is asking, such a small increment on sliders, 7 for contrast, I use much higher values in the exposure tools. Wrong. Um, the point is that, like, well, there are almost no wrong decisions in Capture One. I mean, like, you know, it depends on your, on your task, because and depends on your image and depends on many factors. For example, here, if I will increase the contrast like at like on seven, that well, that's fine, but also I can increase the contrast like 30, like here, make the image black and white, recover some shadows, and maybe even create something like this, you see? And in this case, the contrast 40 looks pretty nice. But if we're talking about some sensitive portrait, 
let's see some sensitive image let's let's find one yeah like this and you will increase the contrast here yeah you will ruin your skin tone that's why yeah it totally depends on your image and there is no like answer that this uh, this is okay and this don't um Pablo is asking, is there a tool in Capture One to straighten the photos automatically as it exists in Lightroom? Well, yes and no. Uh, the point is that you can go to adjust adjustments, auto adjustments, and here you will find uh, that you can set a keystone tool to work automatically in Capture One, but there is a single restriction that the auto correction of the, of the keystone tool will work will work works uh, with uh, phase one digital backs row files only and that means that if you are using like the the regular uh, DSLR camera or mirrorless camera or anything else except phase one digital backs unfortunately auto adjust option is not available for you in capture one that's just the the limitation of Capture One. Oh yeah, Alexei joined us. Hi, Alexei. Okay, let's go further. Uh, now let's talk about this uh, tool exposure. Like it contains four sliders: exposure, contrast, brightness, and saturation. I will uh, I will try to give you some the most interesting insights on this for this tool uh, like first of all that like the most popular question which I hear from my students is like what is the difference between exposure tool and brightness tool actually to illustrate this difference I will have a special image like I have taken this image many years ago just 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 absolutely uh, it was just like mistake and nothing more but now it's a great example of for to illustrate you the difference between the sliders um, the point is that that exposure sliders it is it's digging deep in your raw file you know, like if you will imagine your raw file as a like a like a bowl, like imagine lots of information, and a JPEG file, it's just this flat flat list, like you know, like flat, just a flat thing. Uh, the point is that the raw file. It has lots of information and exposure tool is just like digging and digging and digging in this information and you can recover lots of information using this slider like this you see just just imagine like we have almost not almost like like here 255 255 255 255 on all all the um, uh, all the channels just like take a look like Take a look at this number, 255, 255, 255. Absolutely no information there. But exposure slider is digging into this row file and you're recovering lots of information. Of course, there are some limits. It depends on your um, sensor of your camera. But in general, it's just like a great tool to recover the information from, from, from your row file. And here is the biggest difference with the brightness slider. Brightness slider affects only the information which is already available on the image, like this. You see? I'm just I'm just making darker the parts which are uh, which are all already available on the image. Um, some of some of advanced photographers might say that. Brightness slider works like a mid-tone correction of levels too, and that would be, well, semi-true. 
Um, the point is that Brightness Slider is a smart tool. It works differently for, for a given particular image. I mean, like, for two different images, the br Brightness Slider will work differently. And, like, this is the idea of the slider. Uh, it analyzes your image and just works differently. Uh, exposure tool works always, like, linear, you know, like, just, like, minus two stops or three stops of exposure, and that's it. And brightness, no, brightness is much more intellectual thing. Intellectual thing. Uh, that's why, like, if you just need to, you know, like, to change the brightness a little bit, maybe more intellectual way or something like this, use brightness. But, but, but for all the core corrections, I highly recommend you to use only exposure tool. Um, and talking about the two additional sliders, uh, contrast and saturation, uh, the point is that uh, contrast is pretty nice tool, and as I have shown, as I have have shown a little bit uh, earlier in the show, uh, contrast works pretty nice. Like you can you can like add like, like a little bit of contrast or more of contrast. What you what you, what you need to keep in mind is that, first of all, contrast is also a smart tool. It works differently uh, for different images, because, like, also, contrast slider analyzes your image and, uh, like, the same action performed with uh, two different images, like, uh, would have different effect on it. Um, but contrast is a really nice tool. I use it uh, pretty often. You know, like, to add a little bit of contrast, something like 7 or 8 or 10, in most of the cases, would not make any harm to your image. But you can just uh, experiment with this a little bit. Uh, also, keep in mind that this tool uh, works completely different in different versions of Capture One. For, for example, in Capture One 8, Capture uh, contrast slider war it was like completely different tool. Actually, you can see it by yourself. Um, if you are not familiar with this, let's take this image. If you're not familiar with this feature, Capture One contains all the um, all the engines of most of the previous versions, starting from Capture One Six. Um, let's see, image, default processing engine, let's set caption 7. Now, if we will create the new variant of the image, this new variant will work with, uh, with caption 7 engine. And now, let's apply the same values of contrast. 25 and you see and you will see the big big difference like the uh, the contrast in uh, caption 11 it works really accurate with the skin tone as you can see in previous versions like it would it would like make the skin tone much uh, much less accurate and you see, like the here, you will you would not notice any problems with the skin tone, and and capture on seven or eight, there were some problems. That's why just keep in mind that uh, th uh, this tool works completely different from from uh, from the old versions of uh, capture one. Mm, also. Uh, the saturation slider. There are also two things which you just need to keep in mind about 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 this um, um, about this uh, slider. Yeah, it's uh, first of all it it is also um, a smart tool. Yeah, it works like pretty in intellectual uh, intellectually, and it also analyzes your image image and also like 
preparing the the effect for 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 some particular specifics of your image but the, um, there is an additional feature which you need to know uh, the point is that if you are decreasing the saturation it works absolutely like linear you know, you know like just like just minus 20 40 like uh, 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 and so on right like pretty pretty understandable but at the same time if you're increasing saturation all the colors on your image would would, would be increased differently depends on some particular color um, for example if you're if you will increase you see like the for example the the red color doesn't increase really strong and the blue color increased pretty pretty strong because like well there is no like much space for increasing the the red saturation of the of the red color on this particular image and also if you will compare this to the um, to the um, saturation slider in color editor you will immediately see the difference the saturation in 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 uh, uh, saturation slider in color editor it works just as a regular tool without any additional smart things and you will immediately see this the difference just like just just compare yeah especially in in the skin tone you will notice that the color editor situations saturation works much 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 uh, stronger than uh, from color editor uh, plus in in different engines of capture one like this this tool works also differently like in capture one seven it works like like this oh my god like oh like this something really scary it's just the kit what i am doing you know um Okay, let's set the the default engine to to capture on eleven. Okay, I see. I see. Question. Keith is asking video blog. Can you quickly explain the difference between decreasing and increasing saturation values again? Okay, let's. Like once again, uh, the difference is that when you're increasing, when you're decreasing the saturation, uh, it works absolutely linear. You know, like just, uh, just like minus twenty, minus forty. Like it's absolutely predictable. Just like just moving the 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 standard like slider, but increasing the saturation works really smart. Like it, it increases the saturation for different colors on the on the given image differently. Like uh, for example, in this case, uh, the the blue color will be increased. Uh, saturation of blue color will be increased differently. It's if we would compare it to saturation of the of the yellow color. Like this is the idea. Like when you're increasing saturation, it works just like the smart way. Okay. Mm we have not so many time left and also yeah i will i just wish to to clarify one thing like today we will not talk about like levels and uh, curve tools because well this tools requires a completely like standalone lesson for standalone show for for these tools but there are some additional things which you need to know about other uh, stuff uh, first of all one of my favorite tools uh, high dynamic range I'm a big fan of this tool. I, it's absolutely fantastic tool. Uh, for example, if you, you know, like from my point of view, it works fantastically for most of most of the images. For example, like this. You see, like if I will just decrease the saturation, or sorry, decrease um, increase the uh, the the uh, shadow slider I will recover only shadows shadows and nothing more and this is the idea of this tool high dynamic range recovers shadows reco recovers information from shadows and or highlights 
and it doesn't affect any midtones, and this is really awesome. Seriously, this is one of the most fantastic tools in Capture One. Just like you can just easily recover all the information from your dark areas. Uh, what you need to know about this tool is, is that you can easily mix mix all the all these uh, tools. For example, you can add some contrast and recover some shadows. You can even use exposure tool. You know, like for example, like this, you can use expo exposure tool and then recover shadows. Uh, it's absolutely fine. Even like Capture on dev developers phase one, even they recommend to uh, to do this. It it would not harm your image. That's why you can easily, for example, if you're working with your images, uh, like let me see. Um, Pum, 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 pum. Let's find some. Yeah, like this. You see, like you can recover, recover highlights with exposure slider, and then recover shadows with a shadow slider. Or let's find maybe some little bit better example. Maybe let's find about yeah, like this. For example, I'm adding contrast. Yeah, and then. Recovering some information from the from from the dark parts of the of the image. That's why yeah, high dynamic range. It's absolutely fantastic tool. What uh, also what is really important to know is that high dynamic range works. Um, you can you can have like several different uh, settings for high dynamic range tool on the on the single image. For example, let's take this image, and if I will just apply high dynamic range, well, I will recover some information you see from from the highlight. Let's just let's yeah, let's do something like this. But not all the information recovered here. That's why I can I can just draw a mask, and recover some additional information. You see, then I create additional layer, and apply it again. And again, you see, with each new layer, you will recover a little bit more of uh, shadows or highlights using this tool. Uh, but just keep in mind that, unfortunately, there are some limitations of this, and with each new layer, uh, the tool will work less and less accurate. But anyway, if you need to recover lots of information, you can just draw a layer and another layer and another one, and this way you will you will get uh, you will you will recover lots of information from your image. Um, okay, let's see. Um, uh, Peter is writing. Uh, hello, Alex. Uh, great to see you on the show. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Jeff is asking, has the flexibility of Capture One made any difference to the way you set exposure in camera? Well, um, like just keep in mind that when you're changing exposure settings in camera, it's absolutely like like the the natural way, uh, the mo the most like accurate accurate way of changing the exposure, and when you're dealing with uh, with exposure in Capture One, you're actually dealing with a just with a with a like a bunch of information, and the, this is it. I mean, like for example, uh, it, it 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 has some li limits. Like, let's take some like this. You see, if I will recover like this, yeah, I can recover the 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 sky, but well, I can't say that it. It recovers really, like really detailly, or something like this. Or let's try this. No, no, here it's pretty fine. Maybe. Hmm. Let's find some bad example. Oh yeah, like here. You see? Yeah, you see. Uh, I'm not capable of recovering information here because, like, it's it's too bright area. 
too bright. Um, you can you can you can make it darker only only by by shooting with uh, with different exposure settings on your camera, but you can't recover this information in in Capture One. Like your RAW file simply doesn't store this information. Like this ball of information, well, it just doesn't have it. Like this information is somewhere there. You need like a bigger bowl. For example, like phase one digital bags. They have much more information inside the RAW file than your like regular camera. Um, okay. John is asking, uh, hi, does anyone know how, how know how many core uh, Capture One, uh, how many cores Capture One uses? Uh, looking at iMac iMac Pro. Well, unfortunately, uh, I didn't have this information, and and as as I remember, uh, Phase One is not sharing this information officially, or but maybe I'm mistaken. But I, have, I think I have never seen this information like before. What I can tell you for sure is that there are a few really important things to to know about Capture One. Like first of all. Uh, about if we're talking about the hardware for Capture One, like first of all, you need to 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 use um, SSD uh, drive, like not the regular hard drive, but SSD drive. It's really important. Also, like um, I highly recommend it to install like 32 gigabytes of uh, of memory, or uh, and. The graphic card is also pretty uh, important thing, uh, but just keep in mind that Capture One is using OpenCL technology, uh, and it's really important to, to have a uh, to to, to um, it's really important that uh, that your graphic card it it just shall uh, support uh, the, this technology. But there is an issue. Uh, the point is that. Uh, Recently, Apple announced that it's just like they're rigging off the te technologies like OpenCL, OpenGL, and I don't know. I think that Capture One developers they just have to somehow rebuild the core engine of of Capture One, maybe to work with, with this like metal technology or something like this. I, I'm I'm not really like familiar with all this technical stuff uh, about the about this but but just keep in mind that right now in the actual version of Capture One it's really important to that your video card uh, to support OpenCL technology uh, and and, uh, and, the, and your processing powers they are also like pretty important but not 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 really they're important, but that, that's not the main thing which you shall think about. Okay, um, let's go further. We actually we have like only two tools left, that's Clarity and why nothing. And uh, also like Curse and Lalith, as I told before, like we will we'll have the separate live show about this, about these tools. Let's talk about uh, the Clarity tool, because why I think, well, that's pretty obvious tool. Like you can darker the image uh, or make it brighter only, um, you know, like why not it? You know, it's why I think it's pretty obvious thing, uh, but at the same time there are some interesting things regarding clarity tool. Um, I noticed that lots of my students who have migrated from Lightroom to Capture One, they are they are not really big fans of of the clarity tool. And where I, when I am asking them like like okay folks like what's wrong why 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 you why you don't Really like to use Clarity tool. Uh, most of them are telling me that they don't, they never enjoyed Clarity tool in Lightroom, and that's why they are just a little, are a little bit scared of the slider in Capture One as well. Uh, the point is that Clarity in Capture One works works much, much more accurate than in other software. I will give you a few, a few examples. 
let's find some nice image to show you. Yeah, like this, this bear. Like, first of all, uh, clarity in Catron, it has four working modes. Classic, neutral, punch, and natural. And in most of the cases, you, like in 99.9, Percent, percent of the cases, you will use natural and punch modes. Um, neutral and classic modes, well, they are actually available in Capture One just as, you know, just a good memory about previous engines of Capture One. The point is that uh, you can open the image which were edited with Capture One 6 and you can open it in Capture One 11 and you will see the same editings and this is one of the reasons why all this like old modes of uh, of clarity still exists uh, why they still exist in in capture one uh, but i highly recommend you like in the in the in the modern capture one uh, to use only natural and punch modes um, what is the difference between them natural mode is like the most accurate mode like the most accurate mode, it's like it provides the most accurate uh, clarity effect. Uh, plus, uh, it almost doesn't affect uh, the saturation of the image. And as you can see, well, it works really, really accurate. Also, let's try the the punch mode and the punch mode affects the image uh, image saturation much more noticeably you see like this the difference in saturation especially here like the difference is really really noticeable this is the punch mode and sometimes that's good sometimes you know like Sometimes you're looking for the tool which contains such a uh, such an ability to change your saturation on the image, but in cases when you're working with uh, skin tones or some other sensitive things uh, on the image, well, I highly recommend you to 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 use the natural mode. Uh, also. Clarity tool, it has a structure slider. Uh, this is another fantastic feature of Clarity in Capture One. Uh, it adds like a visual, it like increases the clarity of, of the structure of the, uh, of the objects. And it works especially great for different materials, you know, like for like a wood or something like this. Let's see, yeah, you see like structure. And here you might ask me, like, but what is the difference between like the the sharpening tool and uh, clarity structure? The point is that clarity itself it it is also like a smart tool. It work it, it works with some smart algorithms. So that's why you know like. I just, I just, I can't tell you that, like, well, it just increases the micro contrast in, in the midtones. Yeah, something like that. No, actually, no one knows. Well, n not no one, but all the people who, who know uh, how, how it works, uh, well, they actually signed the NDA and they just can't share this information. That's why it works pretty, pretty smart. And the same with the structure slider. It is it's it is also a, a smart slider. And like your sharpening is absolutely like a man manual control over the sharpening of the image. And structure, it's something different. Like it analyzes your image and increasing increasing only the uh, like the sharpness of, of the structure elements. Something like this. This is actually it's pretty difficult to explain because, like, there are no like official explanation for this uh, explanations for these tools. Okay, let me see. Do we have any questions? Because we're uh, running out of time. 
Okay. Okay, you can, you can if you have any question, just you can you can write write it right now. Uh, what I wish to, to tell you in the end, and that just like if you or some of your friends are planning planning to purchase Capture One, just use this code. A M B C one block. Just tell about this code to your friends. I will, I will really appreciate this. Just apply, or you can just share this code on some forum. Your, uh, your, your regular, regular reading or writing, like just, just share this information. Uh, if you wish to thank, to say thank you or something like this, this to me. Uh, also, if you are looking for some interesting like presets or how we call this in Capture One styles, um, so some prepared settings for your editing, just go to onestyles.pro, click try, and you can download 12 film styles for free and try them on your images or not even try and to work with them. No one would force you to, to purchase them. 12 of them you can use absolutely for free and if you wish you can also purchase up to 200 of them for the, for the really reasonable price if you will compare them to phase one styles for example one styles dot pro okay let me see what we have with questions uh, yeah I don't see much questions Okay, then thank you very much for being there. Thank you for uh, writing your messages. It, it's really important for me. Uh, see you on the next week. Uh, I think on the next week we'll talk about um, uh, round trip editing with Photoshop and Capture One. Uh, that's pretty, pretty interesting topic. That's why thank you, folks. Bye. See you.